subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, it's always a joy coming your way on Senior High School R on the Joy Learning TV channel. In fact, today I'm so happy to come your way with a practical lesson in physics. And I am going to, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the lesson. And then probably Albert is my name. You can call me Pius. Today, we are going to go through an experiment and a simple pendulum. A simple pendulum experiment. The aim of the experiment is to determine the acceleration to gravity using the simple pendulum. So you're going to find small g using the simple pendulum. So you have to try and recap the lessons you had theoretically on the simple pendulum. This falls and I would call simple harmonic motion. So the motion of a simple pendulum is an example of simple harmonic motion. What is a simple harmonic motion? It is a to and fro motion of a body about a fixed point within a limited region such that the linear acceleration of the body is directly proportional to the displacement of the body and it is always directed towards the fixed point. That is a simple harmonic motion. So we are going to go through this experiment and get to know what you need to do. I'm going to hammer on the salient things you're supposed to take note of as you go through a simple pendulum experiment. Now, to start with, you have to make sure that you understand the question before you. Each practical work will present you a question. Usually people will say the question has got two parts, the practical aspect and then the part B that will ask you short questions about the practical. But I'm saying it has got three parts. Why? Every question comes with a diagram. And you have to look at the diagram. So I, I call it look and do. So you look at the diagram. The setup is there, which you call the experimental setup. It's a diagram. Then you look at the diagram, watch what's in the diagram, and try to also do a similar thing, right? So, I have a diagram here. In my diagram, I can see a rotor stand on a bench. I can see a clamp. I can see a tread, and I can see a pendulum bob. Now, after that, the experiment will give you what you call the apparatus. So you make sure that everything stated in the apparatus is available to you for the experiment. In my apparatus, I have what we call a rate of stand. So this is what we call a rate of stand. And that has a clamp attached to it. So that's a rate of stand and then a clamp. Make sure that your rate of stand is on a flat surface. And it shouldn't be shaking as you go through the experiment. If it shakes, then there's a problem. Then I also have what we call pendulum bob. This is what we call a pendulum bob. B-O-B. A pendulum bob. That is it. So you're going to attach another thing, a string to it. Then I have inextensible thread. And this is my inextensible thread. It shouldn't stretch. It shouldn't be an elastic material. No. That is it. Then a stopwatch. So I'm going to use a stopwatch from my phone. That is my stopwatch. You can see on the stopwatch, you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I want to show you how to read from the stopwatch. Good. Then, we are good to go. The next thing you're supposed to look at is you try and you read the question from the first word to the last word and make sure that you understand the question. That is very critical and that is very important. If you don't make a head and tail out of the question, you won't be able to carry out the experiment successfully. So, you have to read the questions, try to figure out in your mind what the question is about, and then you try to do all you're asked to do. 
So I want to take time and read the question, explain the salient points, and then we look at what to do. We are told that you are provided with a pendulum bulb and a 120 cm long thread. So it will be better for me to start with measuring the length of my inextensible thread. So I pick my thread, then I pick my meter rule. I also need a meter rule. It's an apparatus, so that's a meter rule there. A meter rule is a rule that is 100 centimeters long, which is the same as one meter. The calibration is in centimeters. So, although we call it a meter rule, it is a 100 centimeter rule. So, any reading you take from the meter rule should be in centimeters because the calibration has been done in centimeters. Good. So, I'm going to do the measurements. I'll pick one end of my thread, take it to one end of the rule, stretch it to the other end, and that gives me 100 centimeters. That's 100. Then now, I'm going to add an additional 10, 20 to it. So from one end to 20, that is it. So where my 20 ends, I'll hold that place firmly. Then I will be able to freely get that done. Your lab assistant will help you to cut the thread. Whenever you need it, he will help you to do that. So 120 cm long, that should be Okay. So that is my thread. I just hang it somewhere so that I don't, I don't just lose it. And I can put this bulk one aside somewhere. Later on, I'll get back to it. So I have my thread 120 cm long. Now, the next thing, I'm asked to suspend the pendulum bulb provided such that the length of the thread from the point of suspension to the middle of the bulb L equals 10 cm. So the best thing to do is to try to attach the bulb to the string. So I'm going to tie the bulb to the string. I will need only 100 cm length, but I have 120 because I'm going to tie the bulb to the string. That should be okay with us. So let me get my 120. And be sure of it. Okay. Then I'll tie that to the pendulum bulb. So I pick my bulb, I pick the string. Now be careful and tie and tie well because if the string becomes loose and the pendulum bulb falls off, you have to start the experiment all over again, which will be disastrous because I'm working with time. So I'm tying the string to the bulb and I'm making sure that I tie and I tie well so that as I swing or as it oscillates, it does not fall off. So when you are true, you can try a little bit to see whether your bulb will fall off or not. There's a way you can do it. And I'll show you in the jiffy. Okay, so I'm able to tie the bulb to the string. Now I'm going to swing it, so I'll try and see. If I swing this, will it fall? I mean, briskly, there should be some force. If it will not fall, and I'm very sure that when I, I, I suspend it and I'm swinging, it will not fall. So now I've tied my bulb to my string. Then it says that I should make sure that the measurement from the middle of the bulb to the point of suspension to be 100 centimeters. So you pick the bulb, put the middle of the bulb at one end of your meter rule. So that's one end. Then I want 100 cm. Note this, we always measure the length of the pendulum from the middle of the bulb to the end. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That gives me 100, 100 there, then I'll make a mark at that point, 100. So I have been able to make a mark at where my 100 cm ends, there. 
to have made a mark there. That is where I'm going to have my points of suspension. Now, we move on. The question says that we should displace the bulb through a small angle and determine a time for 20 oscillations. For the start, let me show you that. So let me just try and then mount or fix it on the rotor stand. So I'm fixing it there. These are what we call split corks. Split corks, they have been splitted. You can have a cork that is full, but this one is split corks. Just two wooden boards or slabs. Then I put, I put the thread in between the split corks and then I put them together. Then I take them to the rotor stand and clamp and then I try to fix it there. Like that. Making sure that where I have my 100 cm length is just beneath the split cock. Then the distance from that place to where the bulb is will give me 100 centimeters. I'm trying to show you something very important here. So from where I have suspended the thread to the middle of the bulb is giving us 100 centimeters. 100 centimeters. Now, it says I should display the bulb through a small angle and determine the time for 20 oscillations. So ideally, I take the bulb, I hold it this way, a small angle of displacement, then I displace it, so I leave it for it to oscillate to and fro. Now, an oscillation means the bulb starts from one point, it goes and comes back to that point where it began a movement. Then that becomes one oscillation. So, assuming I have the bulb, I hold it, I displace it to this side, so close to me, this way. If I leave it, that means I've displaced it, it goes and comes back to me, that's when I say one. It has gone through one oscillation. So when it goes and comes back to me again, then I've gone through two oscillations. So an oscillation should start from one point, go and come back to the original or previous point before it becomes one complete word, oscillation. So we're going to do the oscillations for 20 times. Simultaneously, you'll be timing it. So as the bulb oscillates and you are counting, you are also timing it. Then it goes ahead to say, calculate the period, T of the oscillation which we know how to do or we we'll learn it pretty shortly. Then it says you should also do determine T squared. Now, it says repeat the experiment with L equals 80, 60, 50, and 40. So it means that I have a length of 100. I will oscillate and count for 20 oscillations. Now, another precaution for simple pendulum experiments is that Whenever I'm supposed to do an oscillation, you repeat the oscillation for each length. Why? To avoid what you call random errors. So you repeat the oscillations, you repeat the timing of the oscillations to avoid what you call random errors. So it means for this length, 100 centimeters, I'm going to oscillate it for 20 times while on the time, start again for 20 times. Then it says do for 80. So do you, do you have to now remove this? Come and measure 80. Come and mount it here. Oscillate for 20 times, twice. Then remove it again. Come and measure 70. Oscillate for 20 times, twice. Remove again. No. If you do that, time will go against you. So, that is why I'm saying read through all the questions before you start working. So from the question, I will need a length of 100. Then I will need a length of 80. Then 60. Then 50. Then 40. So the best thing to do is that you measure all these lengths first before you suspend the pendulum bulb. Very important. So I have 100. I will go ahead. I have 100. I will go ahead and measure for 80, 
60, 50, 40. I'll do all that before I suspend. So all I'll be doing is that whenever I need any length, I'll just remove or, or losing it here and then pull it up to that length. Then it says that we should also tabulate our results. In fact, in the physics practical work, every practical work you'll be asked to tabulate your results. Very important. In fact, it is one of the most important things in the practical work. The table of results or the table of values. Why? The examiner is not or will not be in the lab as you go through the practical work. So what is the evidence that you went to the practical work? It is your table of results. The table of results will show us that you actually went through the practical work. Now, there are some things to take note. In the table of results, you don't have to cancel anything. Yes. If you should cancel anything, it presupposes that you cheated or your values were not genuine. You didn't go through the experiment by yourself. So, in your table of results, you don't cancel anything. Now, you don't also deepen or shading. You shade values in the table of results. You don't do that. It should be neat. You write everything once and for all. So I'm going to show you how to do the table. Now, it is always advisable to draw your table first before you start the experiment because as you go to the experiment, you get values. Then you put the values into the table. Very important. So I'm going to draw the table with you. Now, each experiment counts with its own table. So there's no fixed table for all experiments, no. Whatever you give as headings in the table comes from the experiment. So you read the question and read very well, look at the things you are asked to put in the table, or you need to put in the table, and then you do that. Then we are asked to plot a graph, which will be another lesson altogether. So we are going to focus on going through the experiment and then drawing our table. So let's begin with the table. Now you go to the question, it's, it's question number five. That is tabulate your results. So I went say question five. Now write table of results. Now I'll underline it. And that text will say table of values. Same thing, table of results. Now, what and what will come in our table? Anything we're going to measure that varies, that is different. And anything the question asks you to evaluate or measure and record and then anything that are asked to plot on the graph plot something against something those things will come in the table now it says that we should get length l so i'll write for my first column i'll put l capital l because the question gave capital l now what the unit in which uh, of measurement of the length according to the question 100 centimeters, so it is in cm. So I'll just put here stroke centimeters. That's for my first column. That's for my first column. I don't want to exhaust all the space I have, so let me just manage this very well. So that would be for my L. Let's move on. It says that we should display the bubble through a small angle, determine the time for 20 oscillations. So somebody could have written time. For 20 oscillations. This is optional. You can choose not to write time for 20 oscillations. You can just go ahead and write the times. Now, I have said that you have to repeat the timing. So, you speak a first time. You say time one in second. Then, you pick a second time, time two, also in second. Now, the actual time that you need will be the mean of the two times. So, time in second will be equal to time one plus time two all over two. Right? That's good. Then it says... Calculate the period T. So the period T 
capital T, will also be in second. How do you get a period? The period is a time taken to make one complete oscillation. You are doing 20 oscillations. So how do I know the time for only one? It is the time that I have, the total time, divided by 20 number of oscillations. So that'll give me, it will be equal to the total time over the number of oscillations, which is 20. That'll give you the period. Good. Then it says you should find period squared, t squared. So whatever I get here, I'll square it. So I have t squared. The unit two will become second squared. Now we don't have any other thing to put in the table again. So I can just close my table. Good. Now, we have been given the lengths from the question. So we put in the lengths. It says 180. So I'll write 100. I'll write 80. It says we should do for 60. So I'll write 60. I'll write for 50. And the last one I have is 40. Good. So that will be my table. Now, this table looks so neat. But there's a big mistake somewhere. That's intentional. Every value you put in your table should come with a decimal place. We say that values must be precise. So the examiner will circle all these values. Because they are not precise. So, to make them precise, the question gave us 100 cm. So, we have no other values to add, but you put a decimal place there, 0. So, this becomes 100.0. 0. 0. 0. 0. And then 0. Now, you are good to go. Now, your values are precise. And you will not be penalized for not putting decimal places in there. So, we go back to the question. We need to get the lengths 180, 60, 50, and 40. So, I've told you, don't mount it and be removing it from that time. No, get all the measurements first before you mount it once and for all. It will save you time. So, I'm going to start. I have already have, I already have my 100, which is there. So, I'll hold the bulb at one end. Then, from the middle, I need... 80. I need 80. So I get to the rule. That's where I have my 80. And then I can make a mark at the 80. You can use your pen to do that. So I have my mark there. 80. From 80, the next one I have is 60. Good. So I, I hold the thread and I come to 60. And that is my 60. There, I put my thumb there firmly. Then I put my marker. I take my marker and I put a mark there. So I have 60. From 60, what we have is 50. So 50 is just here. So I have 50. And I make a mark. From 50, what we have is 40. So I get 40. And I make a mark there. Good. So now I have all my marks in place for my lengths. So I have 180, 60, 50, and 40. Now I can confidently suspend it from the rate of stand. Mind you, my 100th mark will be the last mark on the thread. And it should be just beneath the split cock right beneath the split cock. It should be quite firm so that it doesn't fall. If it falls, you pick it up. So let's see. Good. Good. So I have my 100 mark 80, 60, 50, and 40. So you see, I don't need to remove the thread, go and measure, come back and mount, oscillate, finish, go and measure, Come back and mount or slit again. No. 
I have it all once in a, at a go. Then I'm supposed to oscillate. Now I need 20. Take note that on your stopwatch you have zero, 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 zero. Everything is just zero. So as you hold the bulb, I said don't display it to a very large angle, maybe like this. See what happens as it goes and it comes with time. The oscillation will not just go as it's going. You will find the bulb moving and describing a circular path. We call it electrical oscillations. So if you are not careful, the bulb will not go just as it's supposed to go up, forth and back like that. Rather, it will be moving in circles. And that is bad. So don't do that. Just displace it through a small angle. Through a small angle. So I'm going to start. So I'm saying... An oscillation is once the bulb is at one end, when you release it, it goes and comes back. That's one oscillation. So just as you release the bulb, you start the stopwatch at the same time. Very important. So let's try that one. So I have my bulb this way. I have stopwatch in hand. Then as I release, I start it. So start. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. One funny thing is that students, when it's time for 20, instead of stopping the stopwatch, they rather go and stop the bulb. But we need the time rather. Now, look at what I have now. I have 004014. Check it. 004014. This will be recorded as 40.14 seconds. 40.14 seconds. That's how you record this value you can see. If you had a value here where you have the 00, zero if you have something like zero 01, it means you have gotten of you've eaten into one minute. So you change the one minute to second, which would have seconds, would have been 60 seconds. So you could have added the six seconds to the 40 before the point 0.14. But here you didn't get into any minute. So it is 40. Point 40.14. So I go to my table and I record. I put this value there. For 100, my first time, 40.14. Then I'll go to the stopwatch and press reset. Now I've gone back to 00 again. Then I'll repeat the timing for this length. So we repeat the timing. I display it through a small angle. I release and I press start. So start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, look at what I have. So you see, when we say random errors, if I just take in only one value or one reading of oscillations, now I have 40.50. I had 40.14 in the first case. So you see, that is the reason why you need to repeat for each length and pick the mean. So I'm going to write this one to there. For the second one, I have 40.50. Now, you may be tempted to stop the experiment and evaluate, add this to that and divide by two and put it here. You don't do that because other students will be waiting on you to come and use the same experiment. 
So, you just pick the values that you need. Any other thing that you have to evaluate, when you are through the experiment, you find time, and you go and do that aside, so that others can also use the set up. Okay, good. So now, I'm through with the length 100. I've already marked 80 here. So I will only lose in from here. Then my 80 mark is there. So I just go and pull the string. Sometimes you can even keep it here like this. And I'll pull it to 80. To 80. Good. I'll make sure that 80 mark is just beneath the split cock. And then I'll tighten to hold it in place. If it's not tight, it may fall. So you make sure that it is tight. Good. So I put it at the 80 mark. Then I will suspend again. Good. So this one is giving me from here, from the point of suspension to the middle of the bulb is now 80 centimeters. I take my stopwatch, I displace the bulb through a small angle like that. I release the bulb and then I start at the same time my stopwatch. So let's start. Go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, then I stop. I have 36.17 as my reading. 36.17. So I go and record. 36.17. So I have 36.17. Now we go on. I'll restart or reset it. Then go and start for the second timing. Mind you, I displace it through a small angle. As I release it, at the same time, I start my stopwatch. So let's start. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, 36.09. 36.09. Very important. 36.09. So, I will just put that. So, 36. Point zero nine. Now, you have to take note of what you are doing. When the length was 100, my values were in 40s. When the length decreased to 80, my values 36. Now, as the length is decreasing, the timing are also decreasing. We call that one a trend. In every experiment, you must look out for a trend. If you don't find a trend in the experiment, you will score zero for all of the table the observation. Very important. So, it should tell me that in my next readings or timings for 60, I should get something that is below 36. If I should get something be, uh, that is more than 36, then there's a problem somewhere and I have to check it. So, 
I have it in mind that the values are decreasing. So my next values should be less than 36. And it will show. Let's try that one too and see. So we are through with the length 80 centimeters. So we go back and we adjust the length to 60. And that's the good thing about it. Once you have the markings, you just have to just loosen up a little bit. And then you pull up. You pull up. Okay, so that's it. So I'm pulling up to when I, I, I get to 60, just beneath the split cork. And I have it now. So I'll just tighten up. So I have from the split cork to the middle of the bulb to be 60. Then we also do the oscillation. So I displace it through a small angle, very important. Small angle. At the same time, I start the stop clock. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, and I stop. So I told you that I expect my next time to be less than 36. Other than that, I will not have the kind of trend that I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to have. So I have 31.33, less than 36. Then I should be happy that I'm doing something better. So 31. Then I'll quickly repeat it. I'll reset and repeat for this length 60. So start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I have 31.47. 31.47 for the second timing. The next length should be 50. So I go and adjust. I loosen a little bit so I can pull. Then I get to 50. And I'll tighten it. Okay. I make sure that my thread does not interfere with what I'm doing. Good. So I'll reset. I'll displace and I start simultaneously. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, wow, I have 28.96, less than 31, so we are having a decreasing trend in values, very important, it doesn't mean that all the time to be decreasing, no, but there should be a trend. I reset. I start the second one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 
20. I have 28.55 as my stopwatch reading. 28.55. All right. Then our last value, 40. Good. So you see, it's easier and better and faster to get all the readings or the markings on the thread before you suspend it. Other than that, you will be wasting so much time. So we reset, I displace it, and I start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have 26.02. Of course, I know it will be less than 28. Telling me that my values or my readings are decreasing. So, as we shorten the length, you have less and less time for the oscillations. So 26.02. Then we try for the last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I have 26. Point one, three. So whenever the examiner takes your script, he or she is going to look out for a trend in the values. He or she will not look at the lengths because these were given to you in the question. But he or she will look at these. Now, the number of decimal places should be the same in each column. So, two decimal places for the start and it ends with it. Same here. So for each column, you should have the same number of decimal places. And very often, it comes from the instrument used. Our stopwatch gave us up to two decimal places. That is why I have all the values in here written to two decimal places. So in this lesson, we have been able to go through the question, how to tie the thread to the pendulum bulb and how to do the oscillations, how to make sure that we are getting a trend for the values and how to put the values correctly in the table. So it's a good time to call it the day. We've been able to go through the practical session and we have our values in our table for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll get back to the table and look at how to completely fill the table and see what we need to know as we prepare to draw the graph. It's Senior High School R on the Joy Learn Television channel. And Pabi Albert is my name. Thank you for your time and it's goodbye for now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.